today, we're going to review chapters 10 to 11. And I call on starting in our reviewing chapters 1, 2, and 4 a little bit today. Um, so you have Connect Lab 10.2 due today. Thursday, you have 11.1. Please remember with 11.1 homework, you have, <clears throat> it's going to give you lists of stuff. And it'll be like cherry, orange, strawberry, grape, lime, whatever. For your observes, but then your expected to give it to you in a different order, where it's like lime, then grape, then cherry, then you know it'd be out of order. <clears throat> so keep that in mind that you've got to like rearrange them so they're in the same order for your observed expected, or else you'll spend hours and bang your head against the wall and, and they'll drive you crazy. So just remember that for Thursday. Um, homeworks end next Tuesday. Our file is next Thursday. Your file is at five o'clock. I know the schedule says 5.30, but I'm making it 5 o'clock. That way I can give you that 50 minutes of bonus time. Actually, I'll give you more than 25 minutes. But it's, it's an hour and 50 minute exam, but I'll give you two hours and, up to two hours and 15 minutes this way. So it's better. Um, but yeah, you're free to come at 5.30 if you just want only the regular amount of time. But ideally, it'd be great if you came at 5. Um, good. If you're not taking it at 5 o'clock, or at whatever time your class time is, please email me and let me know what, what time you want to come. That way I don't make, I make sure we don't overload one classroom because I can't hold more than 40 people in one room at one time, like legally, in terms of the airflow and everything else. So. All right, don't forget, for chapters 10 11, um, for your homework especially, the type of claims that go with H naught are equal, independent, no relation, same, as expected, no correlation, no difference. Those are the H naught claims. If in your homework it has one of these other claims, these are for H1. Not equal, dependent, related, not the same, not as expected, correlated, different. Those are all H1 claims. And it makes sense because those are the opposites of their H naught claims. And these ones are always going to be no's. All the no's and all the equals, right? No difference, equal. So all the equals and all the um, no no's are all in the H naughts. Um, for my exam, you don't have to worry about that. You can just generically use these claims. For chapter 10, remember 10 is going to be H1 is going to be your claim. For chapter 11, H0 is going to be your claim. So they kind of mix, mix and match opposites. So for chapter 10, H1 will be your claim. So in step 5, when you get down to the summary part, you'll use the words, the phrase, support that there is a correlation between blank and blank, whatever your two variables are. For 11.1, 11.2, the chi squareds, again, your claim is going to be H naught. You can just generically use in, in step five, there is there is not enough evidence to support that proportions are the claim that proportions are as expected. For ANOVA, again, H naught will be your claims. In step five, you can just use is there is not an, enough evidence to reject. Oh, did I say reject on the first one? Can you say that correctly? Okay. Reject the claim that the means are the same. That's it. So, fairly straightforward. Make sure you make use of that. I think most of you took a picture of that last class, right? I feel like I refined this one a little bit. I, I, the correlation, I don't think that was on there last time, but yeah, I'm not sure. Um, <clears throat> don't forget the files covers all chapters, 1 through 11. You're allowed one page of notes, so you can either use your four half page of notes, one sided, or one full blank, blank new sheet, both sides, or any combination thereof. As long as you have one eight and a half by 11 um, two sided worth of notes or less. Um, you also get all your tables, your magic formula sheet, that's that yellow sheet, <coughs> and your TI calculator. If you want um, scratch paper, you can bring scratch paper, blank scratch paper, or I have some. Um, aside, which you folks might need later uh, as well. I'll leave that there. And again, the study guide for the final. 
it, are these problems. And I think most of you got caught that typo that I did from the first time two times ago. Um, I had put 23 accidentally under a study guide exam two, it's supposed to be 20, 22, it's supposed to be 23. So that's a, that's a, a corrected typo. Um, study guide exam four is over in the corner. If you did not get one, make sure you have one. All right, and then also I told you um, that there'll be a separate problem. It's not part of your regular hypothesis test for ANOVA. You'll do your regular hypothesis test for ANOVA, but I'll give you a separate smaller problem where I'll ask you for to compute the F statistic. And I just want you to realize that it's between um, between group variants over the within group variants. Right? So I'll give you a whole bunch of stuff, including those two numbers. All you gotta do is just divide those. That's your F stat. Okay. And it's get its own special problem, separate problem. Um, because it, it, this doesn't fit in with our hypothesis test. Hypothesis tests, you, you have all the data and it's, you can compute all your other stuff for the test. So it's not, it's not part of that. Okay. All right. <clears throat> As I mentioned last time, you, I feel like you were all fairly confident in doing all of the hypothesis tests once you know what kind of problem you have. But if you do a, if you take a linear correlation problem and you try to do a chi-squared test on it, that's completely wrong. And you're gonna lose, you know, 10 to 15 points. So it's really important that you understand and be able to tell what kind of problem you have. So again, I don't care how you tell, these are just some ways, the next three slides are just kind of ways to help you figure out the difference between them. So one way is, is if, if it's two different variables, two different things you know about something, like number of cars and income, two separate, completely different, different things, and you're trying to find a relationship between them, or correlation, or linear regression, if they talk about linear regression, that's going to be chapter 10. It also be matched up in pairs, right? That's chapter 10. Um, if you're talking about frequencies, and it has categories, and talking about proportions, any of those sorts of things, where you have observed expectants, that's chi-squared. That's chapter 11, chi-squared. Um, so remember, um, these ones, frequencies, proportions, that's when, when your data is categories and not numbers. Um, if you have a list of data, then that of observed data, then that's a chi-squared, what I call a chi-squared list. If you have a matrix of observed data, not observed and expected, but observed data, that's the chi-squared matrix. And then the last thing is, if there are multiple lists, and you're trying to get the means are different, and I'll talk about means in there as well. How do you do it? It's a mean, let's say mean or average, right? That's your ANOVA. Also chapter 11. Um, another way to break it down is to think about what you know about everybody in the sample. So if all the people that are sampled, you know two things about them, like how many cars they have and what their revenue is, or whether, what hospital they went to and what their infection was, then it's gonna be one of these guys over here under two variables. If what you know about them is numbers, like how many cars they have and what their income was, that's gonna be this linear regression and they better be matched up in pairs, right? Because it's for each person. If what you know about them is categories, so like you know what hospital they went to and what kind of infection they had, those are not numbers. Those are, those are categories, right? That's gonna be a chi-squared matrix because you know two things about them. If you only know one thing about everybody, like you know, um, what their average was, or what, no, sorry, what their, what their miles per gallon there is, if they're a car. Um, or you know what their, favorite, what their favorite flavor is. Then that's gonna be one of these guys. If you know it's a category, like their favorite flavor, high score list, right? These are when you, when you know there are categories. This one over here, if what you know is a number, like their, average, like their, sorry, like their GPA, or their um, height, or their weight, or their, um, I think we did gas mileage, I think was the one we did, right? Then that's gonna be um, the, the samples. Now, 
if you know kind of two things about them, but what you know about them is a category and a number. Like we know that it's a compact car and its miles per gallon is 34.6. Then again, that's what you know about them is the number and the category just tells you which list they're in. Right? So you might know that someone's a first grader and their height is 43.2 inches. Then the, if you know what you want of each about them, that still falls under the means because the category just tells you which list they're in and then the height will be part of the, the thing we use to compute the means. Okay? Um, the last way of kind of telling these apart is by using that visual way. So I've changed this up a little bit, but I want to take 15 seconds to try to figure out which one of these is which, just kind of visually looking at the, at the titles. Thank you. 